Hello there. Here we are with another uh, OS 10 tutorial. And uh, apologies and thank you to the guy that corrected me for calling it OS X. I don't know why I was doing that. I know better than that. So, at any rate, um, just figured I'd show you some features that I uh, just learned about it recently, as I'm still learning. And some of this may be stuff that you probably wouldn't come across unless someone else showed you or you did some reading in the uh, you know, the literature on the Apple website. So, we will get started. Um, I think one of the things that I would figured out recently that uh, is pretty helpful to me is uh, a little trick with the dock over here. Coming from a Windows machine, I was pretty used to having my, uh, my start menu over here in the, the bottom left hand corner. Being able to push the start button and uh, accessing any of the programs that I had on my machine. So we have the dock over here and it's pretty nice to have all these shortcuts and we have the magnification and it's a good indicator of what's running on our machine at any given point in time but you know normally if I wanted to look at applications that I didn't have shortcuts for in the dock I'd have to open up this folder and kind of go through here which isn't that hard. You can also use the spotlight feature up here type it in. I mean it brings up any application pretty quickly but there's another way that we can do things. If we do take uh, this application folder and we just drag it right into the dock over here, we now have a shortcut for that folder in the dock. We can do this with any folder on the machine. And uh, if we click on it, it brings the folder right up. The neat thing about this, though, is if we right-click on it, we get a start menu. Same thing. Here's all our apps. So it's one of the first things I did when I got the machine, once I figured that out. And, you know, it makes, makes it a little bit easier to navigate around. Uh, let's see. Another thing. Some of you Windows users might know that uh, there's a little trick if you want to take a, take a screenshot and copy it to the clipboard. At any given point in time, you can press uh, Alt and then the Print Screen button on your Windows keyboard. We have an equivalent for that here on the Mac. And it uh, happens to be Command Shift 3. And you probably couldn't hear that, but it makes a little camera shutter sound, and now we have a uh, picture of our screen here on the desktop. In addition, we can do uh, Command-Shift-4, and what happens is this little crosshair comes up, and it's probably hard for you to see, but um, I can drag around anything that I want to drag around over here, and it only takes a snapshot of what I've dragged around. So here's the second shot over here. So, you know, it makes it pretty easy if, uh, like I have iTunes open over here. So I did Command Shift 4, just drag around this album cover right here, snapshot, and um, there's the picture. So, that's a pretty convenient feature to have. Um, another thing, let's say I have a couple windows open. Get rid of these pictures because I don't need them. And, um, one of the disadvantages, kind of, of OS X, OS X, <laughs> is that I can only resize windows from this bottom right-hand tab over here. You know, in Windows, in XP, and I'm pretty sure in Vista as well, although I haven't used that OS, I can resize them from anywhere and I can move them around from anywhere. In OS X, I can only move them from the top, uh, top portion of the window over here, or from, uh, I can only resize from the corner over here. But they built a feature to kind of counteract that into the operating system. If I press the command key, I can move windows that are behind other windows. Also, if I press the command key, I can resize windows that are behind other windows and move them. So, you may find this a little bit useful when uh, using the machine. I haven't really used it too much yet because I'm just not really big on key commands, but if you're used to using key commands, I think that's the type of thing that you'd uh, probably find pretty valuable. Uh, another thing that I've learned, and this would actually have been useful making the other uh, the other tutorials the other day. If uh, if I hold down the control button and then mess around with my scroll wheel on my mouse, it uh, it zooms in anywhere on the screen <laughs> that I want to zoom in on. So kind of a little neat feature, and we'll use that right now, actually. We'll, uh, we'll use that to show you something called Exposé, which we've gone over before, but never really showed you exactly how, uh, how you set these triggers. So, over here, here's the uh, System Preferences pane for uh, 
X was A. Now, these are the mouse triggers. You can see a little little picture of a miniature screen and it, and it shows the corners over here. And then down over here we have the keyboard shortcuts. So, basically how this works is I can, these are drop down menus over here. I can pick what I want each one of these screen corners to trigger. You know, when I hover in the corner of the screen it does something. Over here it turns on my screen saver, activates dashboard, shows me the desktop, shows me all the, the windows that I have open. That's cool. Um, I can set the mouse, the keyboard shortcuts F9, 10, 11, and 12 to do, you know, pretty much whatever I wanted is, want them to do. So that's expose, and that's how you uh, you set that in the preference pane over here in System Preferences. Um, now let's go through a couple uh, a couple media things that it does that uh, you know makes it a pleasure to work with media. Uh, let's open up a um, folder that we have some pictures in. This is something that I found pretty useful the other day. I've got a folder with some pictures of our girlfriend over here. And say I have a laptop, bring it to my uh, parents' house. Maybe it's a slideshow of a vacation we went on or something. If I select any number of pictures over here, if I just, you know, kind of drag a box around them, I can right-click, and it automatically plays a slideshow of these pictures for me. You know, and you can set all these preferences, how quickly it goes through the pictures. Uh, you can index them click on whatever it is that I want to see, I can add the iPhoto from here, I can close it, I can click to the next one as quickly as I want to, and I can close them. So, you know, do this with any pictures that you drag around and click on. Automatic slideshow. So, that's kind of neat. Another thing that I found myself using lately is the cover flow view in iTunes. Just kind of neat, it'll download all the covers for all the music that you have. And, uh, this is how you flip through them, if you want. So, I've been listening to music lately. I'll put iTunes on. Just kind of leave the computer on. It won't, uh, it won't go into screensaver mode when you do this. You just flip through the covers of all your, uh, your music that you have. And, actually, if you let it sit there for a second and go idle, it'll flip back to the one that you're listening to. Probably takes a moment, but... It's kind of a neat way to listen to music. It's almost like you're, you know listening to your actual CD collection. So, so again, like any of the other tutorials, if there's anything else you want to see, just um, let me know. Thank you for watching.